Welcome to Build with Rob. It is your host, Rob Deerdeck, CEO and founder of the Deerdeck Machine, one of a kind venture creation studio where we systematically fuse art, science, and magic to manufacture amazing. Um, we manufacture amazing in all aspects of life and business because that's what we preach down here. How do we build an integrated existence of a high-quality life filled with high-quality energy and success on all levels? That is the dream. That is the dream for all of us, just a high-quality life. Uh, per usual, if you are listening to this show, like and subscribe wherever that's at. You want to be on this show, go to Uh pitch us an idea. Uh, become a machinist, you know, give us feedback on our process, our products, our pricing, all aspect of what we do in the build process of creating businesses. Again, you want to be on the show? Uh, I love discussing everybody's ideas. I love talking through their business. I love getting into it. I love trying to help in any way, shape I can. I really, really do enjoy all aspects of connecting with other do or die or entrepreneurs. Um, you know, and one thing I'm, I want to share uh, today that I'm a big believer in, and that's really trying to manifest things. Okay, I'm a manifester. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy who's like practices manifestation. And a lot of people are like, oh, ooh, oh where are we going? You know what I mean? Like, are you going to be in a teepee, uh, you know, eating peyote, you know, uh, whatever the shamans do to manifest and and i truly believe um that you can put to practice this idea of manifestation and it can really help you be driven and drawn to the stuff that you hope to achieve now manifestation is not a lottery ticket okay like it is not like man i just if i can just think over and over that I will have $10 million. It doesn't matter how I think about it. It's going to show up on my lap. And, and for me, you know, I think a lot of people that, that think about it, think about it from that sort of lens and that sort of idea of like, oh, that's, you know, you, you're trying to like put something in the make-believe imagination and hope that it comes true. But for me, I don't practice it like that, and I practice it every single day. You know, I, I get in my meditation pod, and I listen to a guided meditation about, manifesta- about manifesting, and I literally spend that time just projecting myself into the future about the things that I want um, to see happen in the future, and then I, I experience them. I don't just... Um, you know, kind of think about them one dimensionally, man. Like I feel them. Like I am inside that meditation, like sitting in the kitchen, talking to my older children in, in the house that I want to build. It's, it's me like, um, you know, you know, going through the process of having like one of our biggest exits, you know, I, I was about to sell the details of the exact company. I felt like it was a little out of pocket, felt like it was a little out of pocket. Um, but I really commit to that. You know, when I make a vision board, I don't like, uh, make a vague vision board. Like I identify every single thing, uh, that I want and I make it in detail, you know, and, and most recently I even, you know, I went as far, and this will give you an idea of of practicing manifestation and it, and it, it coming at you real quick. But I decided, okay, I, I want to I want to eventually have a forever office. This is the office that I want to to mirror my forever estates home that I'm building. I even want the same architects, the great Sayota out of South Africa, to design it. And so I decided when I redid my vis- vision board this year. Um, that I was going to create a detailed, like take one of their renderings of another um, uh, building that they designed and put Deer Deck Machine logos on it all 3D and looking all real, like did it super, super real. And then the next sort of level that I took it to is I identified the actual location and building that I wanted to buy one day. 
And and even in my sort of life vision, I looked at at this happening in 2026, you know. But I would meditate and see myself like out on the roof deck, like, you know, talking through like events and and different experiences with our portfolio companies. Like that's how like far I pushed this thing. Then I went and shot photos of the actual building. And then I uh, did the renderings that are, you know, from Sayota's design catalog and put my logos on it and put it up on a vision board. I did this on December 27th, you know, and what happens like, you know, on like January 2nd, um, a... I get a random text from Billy G of Outstanding Foods, who's, who I had said in passing that I wanted to have a forever office one day. He just said, hey, I got a real estate friend who's like basically manages all the, the high-end property acquisitions in Beverly Hills. Like, you, do you have any interest in talking to him? Are you still into like getting a forever office? I said, oh, absolutely. Right? And so for me, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. All I did was like, like begin to think about it and put it in the universe. And then, then what happens? Like I didn't win the lottery and I didn't get a call from somebody that said, Hey, do you want this building down here for a dollar? We're giving the building away. Uh, I got a tool, right? It was now the, a, a seasoned real estate agent that could actually help navigate this, you know, a uh, better understanding and learning of the potential of having this building was popped right into my life, right? And and this is an example of, of, for me, of what happens to me on a continual basis where I am decide in my head sort of the vision of like what it is I want to achieve or manifest, and then I put effort into really thinking about it, right? And this one obviously is quite specific, but... You know, no sooner do do me and this gentleman start talking. Of course, I say, you know, I manifested this because I just put the vision board together and just started really like visualizing my forever office that I want to create one day and then shared with him the exact building that I wanted to get. Within a week, he contacted the owner and then the owner is like, we'd be willing to take an offer and when I when we ran the numbers, it was half the price of what I actually thought the building was. And I'm like, what? Like, am I what? So on December 27th, when I'm making my vision board, just kind of I had it planned for 2026. You know what I mean? And no part of me ever thought in a million years that within a few weeks I would be making an offer on the building that I had on my vision board. You know, and, and, and again, I'm not, this is extreme manifestation in, in, in my opinion. It's pretty remarkable that the path would go in that direction. But but it is a really, um, you know, and the truth be told, I'm not, like, I haven't made the offer yet because I'm a little bit little bit shook. I'm like, man, oh, whoa, am I really ready? Do, my, do I really want to, like, like, buy a building and build an office in it? Like, am I really ready for this right now? But... But it's it's this idea that it wasn't about like anything being given to me. It was getting incredibly specific about what I wanted out of life and then using manifestation as a tool to help pull me towards it. Right. And so what did I get from just picking the location, visualizing it and setting sort of a goal on what I wanted to happen in the future? I then um, began to see the universe conspire to pull me towards it. And, And the beauty of it is, is now I have a direct contact with the seller and ultimately will have a range and a price that I can now uh, more specifically add to my set of goals and my my long-term vision of what I'm hoping to achieve with the machine and the type of company that we create in a much more detailed, precise way where before it would have just been wishful thinking that I would have that that building one day in 2026. And I could have it this year. We don't know. But again, to, to anyone out there, when it comes to to thinking about manifestation and and using it more as a tool 
And and I would say this: if if you want to practice manifesting, it's super simple, right? It's it's getting as detailed and clear um, as you can possibly get on the things that you want to do or achieve, and then spending time not just like wishing for them, but feeling what it's going to feel like when you actually achieve the moment. Buy the building and you're standing in it. Build the house and you're standing in it. Build the company and you're sitting in the office. Like when you, your body does not know the difference um, between the realness in your mind and the realness uh, of your reality. And the more that you can put into feeling it, the stronger of a flag you're going to plant in the universe that's going to conspire to pull you towards whatever it is you hope to manifest. So look, think about that. Practice it. I do it every day. I'll do it every day for the rest of my life. I preach it all the time. I even try to get my kids to do it. You know, my son uh, was killing it at soccer practice, and he, he said he was practicing in his mind. And I'm like, that's it, son. That's how you got to do it. You practice in your mind. And he went out and scored five goals. Okay, uh, we got an amazing episode today, continuing our journey of, of mentoring some amazing do or die entrepreneurs just, just trying to realize their business and life visions. Let's get into it. Phil and Krista Franks, welcome to Build with Rob. How are you guys? We're amazing. Good, my friend. Thanks for having us. Right, well, Thank look, you, you know, I, I've had, you know, a decent amount of, of people appear on this show, but boy, I mean, I, I don't think more kindred spirits than my fellow Ohioans who are on, 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 a, on a mission to help people think about designing their lives and living it in an organized and intentional and systematic way to optimize for happiness and energy and fulfillment. I feel like you guys live this as a couple in a lifestyle. We do. We do. We oh. try, man. It's the, it's the mission now, my friends. So we're inspired by you. All right. Well, look, tell me, tell me all about your business and sort of the vision that you have for it. Well, we are Alan Key, and I'm the owl. Phil is the key. And uh, we didn't know that when we created the brand, but the whole, the whole business is a lifestyle design company. And our job and what our mission and our passion is, is to really help others unlock things about themselves so that they can live more in alignment with who they inherently are. So that comes down to what you're saying, energy and happiness and, and all of that. So we really want to just build this community and help people live more in alignment. The more and more we create those unlocks. It's success redefinition, my friend, like success redefinition, like really taking a look at your life, a hard scope and saying, what matters to me? What, what do I value in life? What do I want to put at the nucleus of like my steps each day? And a lot of the times people get left with a dead end. They get taken down a road of inspiration and they get left with a dead end. And we think we've come up with something by happenstance because of our own life experience. It's given us a chance to really give structure and give space for this to stuff to actually have steps to go and as you define your lifestyle. Yeah. And look, and you guys know, you know, I live it. Uh, you would probably be really fascinated about how I really live it as opposed I to, trade, I, I want to trade I, stories I, on it. You know what I'm saying as opposed to the depth of it, but tell me how, how you've modeled the business and sort of like how it's going as it relates to to creating the business and, and getting people to be a part of it and pay to actually go through the coaching and, and, and acquiring clients. So I'd love to kind of understand the model yeah. and where you guys are at with that. Totally. Yeah. So we're probably about four years in officially. We were doing this work before that just kind of in, in beta and it started off in the business world. Um, and that's actually one of our core anchors of an audience, the business and teams and culture. You see a lot of leaders that are coming to us or individuals that are running teams coming to us and they want to model this lifestyle in their team. And like we said, it's really the bridging of, of work and life. People are starting to really appreciate that from the business side. But it actually was rooted from our coupleship. In 2017, we left careers, high paying careers, comfortable careers in the advent of our first son, Oren. Um, and we really had these like out of body moments where we said we want to be present. I want to be efficient with my time. I want to be the owner of my time. And we built this framework out of coupleship. So we work with a lot of couples to really redefine their chemistry and work better together and get alignment to take those steps. And the last one's with individuals. So individuals in transition, whether it's in a career or they're having a child or just they, they focus on betterment for themselves. They know that they want to continue to get better and grow. Those people are really attracted to it. Um, and so those are the three audiences. Practically speaking, how we do it as a business, like modeling, 
We do it in the terms of products, experiences, content, and community. Those are really the four things that we do. And right now we're broadening the product. So we have a, a core product as an eight week program. We've got the book that we wrote together, 220 page framework. We want to send you one. So I, we'll follow I, can't, up I can't wait to see it. I, I really <laughs> look I wish we, I would have had it before, before we did this, but I can't wait to get one. Yeah. Well, that, was all, that was on us, man. Um, but we, we are working with these people in a way that's a structured eight week course. So, and that's across the board. So if it's a couple individual or business, it, it changes slightly for the application and the business. There's some other dynamics that we go through, but it's an eight week course, two months. What happens annual... after the eight week course from a monetization standpoint? Is there, is there, is there ongoing support for the business side of it or the personal side? Like, how does that work? So we have ongoing support. We give people options. You can do ongoing sessions and those could be one-on-one. -on -one. You could also do group, group sessions. We are also in the process of building a community engine that allows people to stay engaged. So we're just building out different tiers where people can be really in depth and have that accountability in us or our team, or just like that community element, which would be mostly virtual or experiences ongoing. The other thing is that this is an annual process. So we have it built in where you go through the course, you have the ongoing work, and then you revisit it at, at the start of the next year. Mm, yeah. And, and what percentage is business to couples to individuals? Do you think right now I would say we're probably like 75% actually individuals probably. And now you're going to get into my math problems, but 10% of couples. And then the other percentage is business. <laughs> well, played. <laughs> well played. Well played. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. Yeah. And, and, and where do you see the biggest opportunity um, for you guys in scaling this business? So, I mean, right now we're really, really focused on the group dynamics. Um, yep. We think that the group dynamics play a big part in the experience. And we just had uh, a couple ship finish up here. We did a group of couples that didn't know each other. They went through, but by the end of the eight weeks, they were all really bonded. They shared this like really vital life experience. And so scaling the opportunity for people to engage in these group dynamics and enrolled classes is a huge opportunity for us um, that we're really exploring. I think energetic wise um, and what we're getting in feedback, I think a main focus is going to be couples. I think it has the biggest ripple effect and the most meaning. Um, so I think that's going to be a main area of focus, but I think businesses will be a good, slow building engine right now and then grow over time. So we'll have to see where that goes. Yeah. And, and look, you know, from, from doing a deep dive on the website um, and, and just really, you know, watched all the content, right. Including I got, you know, I got kind of drifted into like some other content that was about sort of, uh, the daily routines and you guys talking about the daily routines. Are you a night owl or, or, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a morning person, I'm a morning person, but I can't get up earlier than, uh, than seven, you know? And I just did this whole like thing about how I've been getting up at like three thirty and four because oh, it like God. transitioned from six to five to where like, man, I'm going to bed early. I might as well get up before you get that extra hour. It's like getting, <laughs> you know, it's, like getting an extra month a year if you get up uh, at four. Uh, but I'm, you know, for me, when, 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 when I think about, you know, because I, obviously I connect with everything about it, first and foremost, because I know it works, right? And I know the power of, of sort of designing with intention and then sort of growing in. And as you grow, you evolve and, and adapt. And that vision and intention adapts and evolve because you actually get much clearer and, and understand what you're hoping to achieve more and more as you get further out. Right. And I, I like to refer to it as the unfolding goal theory, but yeah. it's yeah. the, you know, it's the, you're still in a service business, whether you like it or not. And despite the mission, um, you know, to, to, to really want people to get the most out of life, it, your clients need some sort of quantifiable result. And in this game, it's difficult. Right. right? And so, yeah. so when I think about like, you know, like scalability, you know, as it relates to, you know, creating a larger business, that you guys could hire people to help scale? Because I, I have a feeling you're probably jammed because it's your personal touch and and basically you managing it uh, is where the scale is, right? Because it's right like, now, you're right. you know, because even, even when I'm, I'm watching like, you know, the the testimonial videos of the, you know, the the all the different 
people that worked at the business and it, there was touches of what Krista would do, what Krista brought out of him, what Krista, you know, and it's like, it's like, I'm like, well, ah, that gets tough because then it's like, then right. it's as much as, as you guys can ac actually do become right. sort of your, your ceiling, you know? And, and, but I go back to output, you know, and, and you've probably heard me preach qualitative data. Like, how do you feel every single day about my life, work and health? You know, for me, I make my wife do it every day. How do you feel about, um, our relationship? You know what I'm saying? Got a two the other day. Um, <laughs> but That's it's, okay. it's all right, man. And, it's and again, it's and, and it's awareness. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm not trying to like, um, I'm not trying to force how I think you should feel. I'm having awareness of how you actually feel, you know, yeah. but the beauty of the qualitative data that I've done for years, I can tell you in numbers how much happier and better my life is. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, and it's a, I, I only say it to when I look at the business and the output, like it is, it, it's, it's, it's more like the, live your best life, be happy through all this stuff, as opposed to like from a business have employees mm -hmm. are 25% happier. Like they're right. like 26% more efficient, mm -hmm. right? Like, and it be like putting some sort of qualitative measure inside your system um, that can be a quantitative number that you can point to, to be able to, um, convert more. This is more in my mind from the business to business perspective, sure. because I, I feel like the more effective you are with a company, then everyone in that company is now a client for your couple, uh, program, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Or the individual, works. right? So it's like, yeah. like to me, like the, if that's the tip of the spear and then it's like, okay, well, how do we get more companies? Then it's finding a, it is all about the CEO and the size of the company, right? I, I would argue that it's like, like 10 to like 25, um, person companies, you know what I mean? That like where you have, you're just trying to connect with the CEO and then ultimately, what you can provide them beyond like connecting right now, it's like heart connection, right? Like, like, Oh, like you guys are so pure and this is amazing. And this would be great for my whole company because this is how I think as the founder, but right. it's like, yeah. if you could turn it more towards like, rather than, than kind of saying, if you're happier, you're, 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 and have more energy, you have more output. If you can quantify that, there's such a richer level of skill or, or a scale. And then yeah. if you can then turn, you know, optimize those teaching and frameworks that are the eight week classes to where you have bodies that you can trust that can deliver the same value and, and, right. and, uh, that you guys deliver as the lead creators of the concept. Now you could do more and then figure out what the ongoing sort of support whether it's like coming in and like doing group discussions, like, you know, every quarter, whatever it is, because then, then your business becomes this lifetime value ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? Like when you get a company, it should be like, okay, it's the eight week course, it's the quarterly dollars. And then we convert two to three people on individual programs, but, right. and, and then we do our yearly assessments, like whatever it is, like you got to like build a systematize the business model in a, in a way that you're really looking at like the lifetime value, uh, to each one of these clients is, mm -hmm. it's just a way that when I see it, you know, I don't know if you guys look at it that into it in that level, since you're really just sort of like, Hey, we're just trying to get the next customer. You know what I mean? Right like, now, like, yeah. like right now it's like creative services, you know, which is, um, you, you know, the service and, you know, it's the toughest of all because it's like, you basically start the year off every year at zero, you know what <laughs> I mean? So, so it's like, you know, building in that reoccurring stuff and then building that relationship with that CEO where you become an instrumental part of the culture and the business. And now every time you land, uh, a, a, a customer for, that's a CEO that you can be like, I'm, we're going to be with them for 10 years. You know, it's like right. whatever it ends up being um, is just when I like think about how you guys could really put a deeper structure to like what you're hoping to achieve mm -hmm. um, rather than 
you know, rather than like, like right now, I, you know, if, if, if it's leading towards couples and the group sort of dynamic, it's still tough to scale it. Right. Because it's still like, you only got a certain amount of time. You got to get the people together. And now you, now you got to right. find the time to all be together in this. Like it's a, a mm -hmm. much more sort of complex, um, aspect of it, but that would just be, you know, one thing that I kind of noticed as I was, I was taking a look at, at the, the going deep into the website as a whole of kind of, of what you're offering. Now, I feel like I just kind of jumped all over, uh, the question you guys were going to ask in the first place, but could you just tell me the question? I think it's pretty similar to what I went into, but is that, uh, what, what was the business question that you guys had? The business question, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the yeah. head and, and hit on two key points for us. But the question for everyone else was, what's the most viable path to consciously scaling or growing the business or product mm -hmm. and acquiring the right client? Yeah. And so I think yeah. what to reflect back to you, what you shared that I think is really super valuable and in alignment for us is a big strategic plan item for us right. this year is to measure impact. So not just to measure, you know, your dollars and all these other optimizations, but measuring impact. And I think that impact also equates to the value that we provide. And then that's a communication tool to those clients about what they receive. And then that's something that we can use as a, as a marketing engine also. 100%. And then I think the other piece is we've been, we always are thinking about scale because for us, our presence and our time with our family and doing the things that we love is so important. So we're constantly thinking, how do we deliver just as much impact and add just as much value, but we aren't personally doing all the one-on-one. So we're product people. So future vision of this in the next year or so is a, is a web application that allows us to then do the work through that application. And we're just creatively trying to figure out how do you not lose the impact by taking out the people and yeah. ma by making it more of a, an automated process. Yeah. And look, and I, I, am, I feel like pulling out the people may be difficult. So it's almost like... Um, it's like scaling the right bodies with the right clientele um, and creating a plan where that clientele can be valuable year in and year out and become reoccurring revenue, figure out how to go beyond the eight weeks, right, is is really where there's a holy grail in here, right? Because it, it just ends up completely lining up of like, okay, if we can get this many ongoing businesses, right? And and then we would need, every time we get to this number, we need one more body. So mm -hmm. as we get it up and then it's like, it's limitless. And then you just focus yeah. on the teachers you help design and then optimizing and making more value and quantifying it for businesses. There's where the scale is versus individuals and like, sure. like where it's going to be like a couple is going to go through an eight week program and then, you know, um, do an assessment in a year, like, you know, wh whatever it may be unlikely to go through the full program again. Right. So it's like, it's like even, even then getting new bodies again to go in there, it's like constantly getting new body to go through yeah. it, um, is why having some sort of reoccurring, uh, aspect of it that has a ton of value. And then again, it's on you to like, man, it is any way that you can quantify it is is that is the core of the marketing engine and then it's the core of like the word of mouth right because yeah. then it's like oh you got to do this i did this and this is what it's doing and here was the result like i i think mm -hmm. that 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 is a a a really big thing and, and even for me as i'm you know because i obviously i'm pretty hardcore um a, as i approach it but even before i'm you know, as I'm working on on developing a book and sort of all of this in a much tighter sort of applicable tactical um, way to use it, I'm 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 doing it with my employees and the people that I work with as I go, right? Because it's like it's like let's start let's build a life together. Let me like help you build the life, and and it always starts first with with leading towards sort of the financial sustainability and, and, and your pathway, uh, to your like financial sort of, uh, wellness is really the thing that I think people, you know, tend to overlook the most, you know what I mean? And it's the most as it re relates to stress and mind share. And then mm -hmm. it's, 
you know, but, but, you know, for me, it's physical body, mental, uh, finances, career, people, fun, adventure, leisure. Right. And, and you can't, connect them. They're all integrated. And if you focus too much on one, you know, like you, there's going to be out of balance, you know, and to give you an idea of, of how I've really locked in on it, which you guys will appreciate is that times the, the, the thing that you're locked in, right? So now between those things, you're sharing time, which then ultimately is where you're also that are driven by the energy, right? The quality of it, then your capacity, how much actual mind share can you dedicate to, to all these different things and how to keep it balanced. And then, so you your only option is to automate it, um, right. or, or get, get better and better. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, yeah. and then effort, uh, make it more and more effortless to get back capacity, mind share, all these different mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Like it lives inside this, this ecosystem of time, energy, and capacity that you have to, that you have to master, which I have. I love that. So <laughs> I love that. Right? Um, it's I a, I can't wait to read this book. I don't want to read the book. Hopefully yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah it'll awesome. be, yeah, it'll be for, it'll be, you know, it's one of those things. And I'll tell you, like, you know, you, you probably also appreciate this where I have, you know, I do these beautiful vision boards with me and my wife. Right. So it's like mm-hmm. me and the wife have each our own sides and then our family stuff in the middle. And I get so specific. And even on what I made on this vision board this year is I put um, like New York Times bestseller, but I didn't put just number one on New York Times bestseller. um, And that was the satisfaction. I looked at the New York Times bestseller and I saw Atomic Habits and You Are a Badass. And they had been on there for like five years a piece. It was like Mm -hmm. 327 weeks on the New York Times. And so I'm like, okay, my goal is 511 weeks. 500 weeks. (laughs) And when I, so I'm Photoshopped in machine mindset, Rob Deerdeck, number one, New York Times, it says 511 weeks underneath it as, and it sits right next to, you know, like my wife's iconic beauty, uh, you know, sponsoring Pat, you know, the Miss USA pageant. You know what I'm saying? Like it's in the sense of like how much I, I try to put in the depth uh, yeah. as it yeah. relates to to manifesting. Now, your clarity. Please, your clarity, man. please hit me with your guys' life vision. I would love to. Yes, hear. sir. So you have. I mean, obviously, we look at you, and even what you just said, so resonant. Every year, we do a similar thing where we're going into our depths and we're still getting really clear. But there's a balancing act here, right? It's a balancing act of like how much of that mind share and energy do you give to all these things and. One of the things that we hold really true is like our relationship dynamic between us and our family. And so the question we have for you is, what message would you share with a husband and wife duo, partners first, and then business partners, from your lessons in building and scaling businesses and the impact it's had on your relationships? Yeah, and and, and look, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make this really easy for you guys um, because I want this to make sense for you. Um, because look, I, I go to the absolute end to ensure the energy of my household being as pure as can be, you know, even we were run power went out, we're running behind today, like on shooting the show and I will not compromise leaving here and going and picking up my kids to take them to soccer. Okay. And then take my wife to go, uh, have sushi tonight. Um, I will instead say schedule another time to finish what we missed early. Right. And, and again, you're talking to someone that writes an email to his wife every single morning of everything that he's doing. We do big family syncs with our assistants and go through everything to make sure we're on the same page. We have breakfast date. We have a movie night. We have sushi night. We have Sunday dates. Like it is, we do family, like, um, uh, meetings with the kids. We pick the kids up and take them to school every day inside the schedule. It's like, and, and as you may have heard, I track every bit of my time and I, I last year spent 14% of my life with my wife and 13% with my kids. I worked 25%, 25.5% on the deer deck machine and 4% on uh, shooting ridiculousness and lived this deeply balanced life by design. Mm-hmm. And then I'm 
have a therapist comes to the house every two weeks as neutral ground just for us to like, like if there's anything that like we weren't able to talk about on top of asking my wife every day how to send me an email so we have a valid proof uh, of how she feels about our relationship zero to 10. But forget about all that. This is the number one thing that that you have to do to really focus on is understanding each other's triggers. Mm. It's the triggers, man. It's yeah. like, it's like, like it is for my wife. Her trigger is just like something like not like mismanaging her expectations, right? Like if all of a sudden, like I was, we were supposed to just hang out with the kids and I want to watch football. It's like it, to me, it's like, oh, we're not even doing anything. Like, you know, I want to argue that we're not even doing anything. I just have it on in the background. But for 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 that to happen, it's a trigger for her that I chose football over her and the kids. Over them, yeah. You know what That's I mean? Right. And 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 then understanding what are triggers beyond the relationship, right? To just right. be aware of because you can't just, oh, you're down. Oh, it'll it'll work out. It'll feel better. Like, don't be, you know, it's like depending on on what it is. And and to me. Even personally, understanding my own triggers, like even last night we went uh, to a wonderful movie date as we do. And she knew that I was kind of like, you know, like deep in thought and, and she's like, you know, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, I just got triggered, man. She's like, which one is it? I'm like, oh, I just got hit with, it's a chaos trigger. It's a chaos trigger where it's like, when I feel like I am, you know, cause I, I live at this very unusual threshold cause I'm, I'm extraordinarily ambitious and, um, you know, a high tolerance for risk. And so I need to kind of always be on the edge. And, but when I get beyond the edge where I feel like I've pushed everything, get a little, like when I feel like chaotic, it mm -hmm. just, it just triggers me, you know? And, and so, but she knows it because we developed and understand it. So it's really like, Hey, like, you know, he's, and it's not, she's not going to talk me off of it. Right. You know, it, she's not going to, there, she knows that there's no value in telling me like, well, you know, it passes with time. Like, you know, you know, it's going to go away. <laughs> it's like, she's like, oh man, she's like, oh, these are the worst ones. I know you hate these. And I'm like, no, I know. You know, it's like, it, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, but the moment we talk about it, it's almost like you're, and I recognize it and, so, and it's like, you're, you're, you're there and you don't have that many, but it's just mm -hmm. recognizing that they're not. They're not like, hey, let's try to solve these. You, you've you got to kind of burn through them. And you know when that certain things get you, um, you know, that are own personal outside of the relationship or the things in the relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and you still find yourself losing it when depending on how you're feeling where you sometimes you even though you know it's a trigger and I do this all the time where it's like I know it's a trigger but cut 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 me a break right. I, I tried so I've been doing all this other stuff and now I messed up on this one thing and right. now I'm getting like it's as if I've like and I have to like like always regroup and be like, don't, I know as much as I wish that didn't trigger her, there's, there's no point in trying to start an argument on why it shouldn't. You know <laughs> what I mean? So my advice to you is master it, those triggers, man. And just, just for yourselves and each other and, and avoid them at all costs. Build your life around, you avoid them. I love how you've named them. You've, yeah. you know, you've whittled it down to know which ones are triggers. You've okay. named them and then you're not uh, absorbing the other persons. You're kind of saying, I can have empathy for you, but I'm not going to take it on for myself. And super inspired by your shared language. The yeah. fact that you guys have this shared language with one another. So it's not foreign. Like she's very in tune with your triggers and your mental loops. We call them mental loops yeah. where you get caught in the gravity of a loop. And the fact that you guys shared that chemistry, super inspiring, man. Yeah. yeah and, Thank and, you for sharing that. Hey, look, and, and for me, it's that lifelong commitment of every time another thing comes up, how do we put a system in place to solve it? You know, it's like I, I don't write her an email every day because it's like it's fun for me to like get up 
and write a full email of everything I'm doing that day and go find the love quote that I give her, even though now it's automated and habitual and part of my life. (laughs) But she needed it because I do so much stuff that she would just overhear me talking about something and have no idea. So it would feel disconnected and feel like I don't care to share with her all the things that I'm doing. And so it created this this level by but putting in this system then allowed um her to get Connection. visibility on that every day and now that's gone and then mm-hmm. now it's like like she can ask me about it or have clarity on it and i just it is i have a thousand of those that i have just keep applying over and over um that continue to optimize all aspects of our relationship because and it'll be endless till till i die Right. Yeah. Because it's like there's it, it there is no you're growing and evolving together. And so like the needs and wants and and different sort of things that that will begin to grow and evolve as you become more dynamic, have more kids, bigger business, all these different things like you're growing and evolving and adapting the same way. And and all those systems and tools that you continue to put into place to just ensure that you have what is great energy together. Yeah. Just That's great it. energy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, you're not pulling from each other that you're giving energy to each other so that you have more energy to de- dedicate to everything else. And then what is it doing above all? It's the shining example to your children yes. of what's possible. Really true, you know what I'm saying? In a world of like where basically everybody has a bad relationship, like as a uh, as what they look at as like as what they don't want to be. Versus yeah. like a relationship of like, this is what I would like to be, this which is, is our fine. mission for our children to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. We, we call it that this is, if this is our foundation. We will, we have such an integrated life where our business and our lives work together that if our foundation is off, we have to stop everything, get it back in alignment and then move forward. Granted, similarly, we've developed a lot of these systems to be able to do that quickly, but because we can't have a hard stop for a long time, but our life vision to your question earlier, when we're looking back on our lives from our deathbed or just at a really old age, this relationship and the love and what we've shared with our children and taught them, it's so important that each of those moments where they're seeing that or we're feeling that it's like so important because it's compounding Compound over the lifetime. I know you've talked about that. Before. Yeah. Look, and I'm not, I don't, um, I don't want to go on forever, <laughs> but you know, when I, when I got to the point where I transitioned to like this sort of like self-preservation to generational preservation, right? Because like, and I think about all the tools and, and the relationship with my wife and my children and the example that it's that I wanted to be to generations of mm-hmm. Dear Dex. I feel like you guys are laying that same sort of foundation today, especially with creating your frameworks and your books and, your, and all these things that basically like your children and your children's children can apply to their lives. It's very aligned with like sort of my 500 year plan for what uh, I'm attempting to do now. Mine is way more extended. Okay. It includes building an estate where there's family meetings and I'm going to film uh, messages to the family, 500 of them. So there's like old man deer deck again, like giving us a family <laughs> message. Hey guys, great to see everyone. 2,344, the year of the tiger. What an amazing year. You know, whatever I end up doing, like I'm going to make it so extended. You know what I mean? That like the patriarch is like, you know, because I already got the foundation of flipping cars and getting attacked by sharks. And he was a pro skateboarder and then he was a television guy. And then he's he became this guru. Yeah, you uh, a Zen master. Then you become Zen. You know what I mean? It's it's but sharing that and then that being like the value that goes on for generation mm-hmm. after generation. I think you guys are in the same same boat uh, of what you you are creating as well, you know. Amen. So with that, man, I just want to say I look forward to connecting with you guys today, and I, I appreciate meeting both of you, uh, and, and look forward to to seeing you guys evolve and grow, and, and look forward to seeing getting your book and and just seeing how you guys evolve over time. Because I know it's going to be special. Rob, thank you so much. This was a joy and so valuable. So valuable, man. And really, the kindred spirit thing's true. Really feel it, man. Feel the connection. No thank doubt. you for the wisdom that you shared. Shout out to Ohio, man. Shout out to Ohio. All right, you guys be good. I wish you the best. All right, man. You too. Take care. Giovanna Schlossenberg and Luther Glover. Welcome to Build with Rob. How are you guys? Welcome, welcome. Giovanna, please tell us all about the vision that you have for JoJo Knows. 
So JoJo Knows is our children's book series, and the vision for it is to really start to connect our brand with tri-level reading. And what tri-level reading is, it's, it's one story broken down into three versions. So as I was writing the first book, I realized that my book was too long. It was almost like a chapter book, like Charlotte's Web. And so my true audience is five to nine-year-olds, and they were connecting with the pictures and the story, but the parent wasn't able to really land the plane inside of their attention span. So I wanted to go back to the drawing board and make something more inclusive. So we came up with tri-level reading. And what this is, is from newborn to four, you would get a board book, which is this size book, like a little baby book. And it's written in what we call the alphabet tale. So it's written in A, B, C, D. So it has that type of iambic pentameter. And then we go to our chapter book, which is the first version of the book, but it's written into the numeric tale. So inside of here, we, we start to talk about one, two, three, four, and this is our age range from five to nine. And at the very end, we have our 10 to 12, which is like the Charlotte's Web chapter book. So the whole point is to bridge the gap between learning and fun. So we've got our reader from newborn all the way to 12. So they know the characters, they know the shapes, they know the storylines. And with 25 titles, they get to pick which one they want to connect with. And we wanted to show them with, we have these um, called Jojo No Shapes, because we were recognizing that people were connecting with our characters in person, but what do you do outside of that? You know, just kind of something you want that's more personal, you know, almost like a rainbow bride or a, uh, yeah, almost like a rainbow bride. So we came up with our Jojo No Shapes. So we have Holly Hart, Cyrus Circle, um, Triangle Tracy, and these are things that the kids will be able to connect to with through all the. And world. then, how? So where does the learning three. center fit into all of this as it relates to the business you're trying to create? So, what I wanted to do was create a space where we would actually be able to test and assess these needs as far as what level the children were on. So, the learning center came about so that we could provide a safe space for families to have tutoring. So you come into the learning center, you take an assessment, and you might have a five-year-old, but they may be reading on our chapter book level. So after they take an assessment, we're able to say, okay, yes, they may be five per se, but they're at a higher reading level. Why don't we work with them on this? But this learning center, what makes it a caveat is the location of where we want to place them, which is civic arenas, um, boys and girls club, community places. You know, oftentimes when we were raising our son, Chase, we would go to like the Royals and the Chiefs games. And during the intermission parts, we'd eat in different things. But if there would have been somewhere else in that time, we could have taken him to assess maybe some of his learning needs while we were there. I think it would have really been beneficial for us in his early years. Yeah. So I figure we still got time so we can start now and create something to where that next generation of families and kids visiting these sports arenas that bring thousands and millions of like-minded people, meaning we're all there for one event, have fun sports. So you're already in this environment of positivity. I think it's a great place to have this space so they can walk in, connect with the characters, get an assessment. And there's a, another little part, you know, inside of the learning center, like I said, we want to connect with them on their writing level, their reading level. And we're also adding virtual reality headsets so that we can uh, help transition them into this virtual world. Yeah, and, and look, I, 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 what, I, what I know about you, Giovanna, <laughs> is, boy, you're ambitious. Boy, it's like, I'm a, I'm, hey, I, look, we're going to add this. We're going to go to here. Then we're going to go, look, I got this. We're going to try level it. Then we're going to, it's a wellness center. We're going to have yoga. Next thing you know, we're going to have VR. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's, it's seeing the amount of, of like information provided like that that you sent uh, our producers as we were going through the show which was amazing because it gave me deep insight i'm i'm looking all the way into your brochures uh all the way down to your book pricing strategy i'm i'm all the way in your entire world and 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 let me give you my assessment as like like where i see something really interesting and in, and in, as an opportunity because what i really thought was was the most interesting about it was a place where mental wellness and fun meet, right? It was like this mm -hmm. like mental wellness side. And then when you look at Jojo knows pain, Jojo knows, you know, fit. I don't like what's, what's a uh, Luther's uh, book going to be. 
So Luther's book, uh, the fourth book in the series is Jojo Knows Fitness, and it's about the importance of mental health and wellness. Yeah. Um, the books are autobiographical, so they actually took place here. And right behind us, we're actually in Luther's gym today. Right behind us, we do, we're doing some yoga sessions. So in the book, my friend and I go to different fitness centers and we don't get that right feel because we don't feel welcome. No one's talking to us. They're not asking questions. It's more of this physical facade. So she asked me to come to her friend Luther's gym and we're going to do yoga. I didn't know what yoga was. And so we come. This is the in the book or is this in real life? Both. Oh. <laughs> so it happened in my real life in 2016 when I wrote the story. And then, hey, Luther, are you um, trying to tell applied- me you're, like, you're a yoga instructor as well? <laughs> no, Mac. I outsource people. For okay, that. okay. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm hey, I'm if gonna Luther, Luther Glover, hey, I'm big as hell, man. Hey, hey, you I look, somebody to give me yoga, look, bro. You look oh, big, man. and I'm like, man, if Luther's in there teaching <laughs> yoga, man, Luther, Luther's got. Hey, something okay. special. I'm not gonna lie. I got. I'm just gonna keep it 100. Nah, but I'm, I'm just, hey, I'm but, just but look, conditioning. but look. So what? What? I, what I'm. What I love about this. This wellness meets fun sort of idea because wellness like and and mental health really matters right now right and and it's like especially for those that don't have access to the tools and to me when i look at the book series it's it's really it's it's almost like the ability for the whole family to kind of participate in this story of like bettering each person's physical health mental health overall wellness which really leads me to like, you know, versus like this idea of the family learning center as much as it's a family or uh, as much as the Jojo knows learning center, it's this family wellness center, right? Because you offer all these additional things of, as it relates to yoga and other activities for the adults, you know what I mean? And, and, and when you think about even the books, they're really about like mental health and overall wellness as it is for the different stages. But the younger kids, it's their parents like helping sort of explain them as they grow into the different books beyond mm-hmm. the assessment of their reading levels and writing levels. Right. Which which kind of falls off into a a more oh, specific yeah. tutoring, teetering, teaching category, um, which I know yeah. you love because I know writing is your passion. But but when I think about how you've orchestrated orchestrated all of this and, and how to make it a a focused sort of value proposition to the consumer and that ties back to the books you're creating and the center, I just think there's something really valuable at this idea of the family wellness center where the families can come in and use all of these different tools to better themselves, learn about themselves, have conversations together to essentially begin that process of, of taking care of them themselves in in places in a lot of where they just wouldn't think about it otherwise you know what I mean so that that's something that I really see for someone that I know without knowing you how tough it is mm-hmm. for you to lock in on like what what is that 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 sort of like quickest path forward to kind of get there um is mm-hmm. just something I I think you should think about in and kind of I'd be curious to to know your sort of business question as it relates to what you're trying to achieve too so the my business question is I'm such a visionary I'm already so far into the future of this I want to make sure once we get there on more of a public and branded level that we sustain there. Sustainability meaning keep fixing a problem. I don't want to ever disconnect disconnect from why we started this, which was I wanted families to be able to come together and read a fun story that made sense. You know, in the very beginning, I told Chase, I said, buddy, we're creating something where families will read these stories to their children at night. And this is a very big deal. So us as a family, we remain role models. We remain um, visible, you know. I grew up reading Ramona Quimbley and the Bernstein Bears. I couldn't talk to Brother Bear. I couldn't I couldn't ask Mama Bear questions. And so with this children's book series, I, we're right here. I don't want people looking backwards. That's depression. I don't want them looking forward with anxiety. I want them present. So we are right here. Chase is still, Chase, Brian, myself. And so with this series, I'm hoping families come in, you know, and I always envision families coming in in different age ranges, like a five-year-old comes in, a 10-year-old comes in. I want the five-year-old to be able to have the same experience as the 10-year-old. And so with the JoJo Knows series collection, 
They still can tonight talk about JoJo knows cooking. Only they're talking about it in their respective, I feel, um, level of the genre we've written it in. But that way, the story stays the same. But we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah, and look, and that I, was I think you got to really like, like, in order to get it sustainable, like you got to build it into a structured business. You know what I mean? And and I think your target audience is the parent. Right. And like, here's, mm -hmm. here's how, here's this, here's a tool for you and your children. And here's the output, uh, as it relates to your mental health, your overall wellness, these things that you can learn together and what it's done for our family and what it can do for you. And then for that to be sustainable, you know, it, the back end of that, as it mm -hmm. as it relates to being books that people buy and customer acquisition and people and getting the awareness of people learning about the tri level reading and ultimately uh, the JoJo centers and how they could end up in more places like you've mm -hmm. got to get some real structure to that and that requires yes. like an an operator's mind you know what I mean and mm -hmm. and I, I and a partner that can really like fill in those blanks for you so you can focus on just creating more stories and being yes. sort of the voice of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's in, in how you find that person and is in where that person exists, I think is, is someone with an existing business, someone that lives in your world that you can build that relationship to, to get to, but that's the thing that you got to find in order to find okay. that sustainability. You know what I'm saying? Cause you got to, you got to you got to put some focus to it um and then have somebody help you turn it into a a business so you don't get caught in sort of like constantly ideating and constantly constantly just trying to be like okay what where should i put my energy cuz i got all these things mm -hmm. i i'm trying to do that i dedicated my energy to you know what i mean so you saying outsource cuz like i think for myself i run into that too with the training aspect with like my clients, like um, I finally just found, and it's so hard running a business, you know. And then like, like I came back for the for you guys for the the what we're on right now, the Zoom. And uh, before that, I was out doing a um, a, a homeless giveaway with Tyreek Hill. He's one of my clients. And so, you know, when you work with those kind of guys, you can't just train them. They want you to go here and there. You know what I mean? And and you know, um, finding someone to train was my biggest you know, hiccup. Yeah. And now I have a full-time trainer while I can go out and try to network and, you know, yeah. get yeah. more, yeah, connect the dots and bring people in. But as, as far as uh, outsourcing is, I know like uh, as myself, um, the standpoint is always the budget being tight yep. overhead, and, you know, trying to outsource. I'm fortunate. I have two video guys that work with me and they, they take care of me a uh, good deal. I got with them guys, but, you know, because with athletes, it's all about content. They want the videos. They want the pictures. They want this and that. Yeah, and look, so for I, you I too, that, though, you know, for you, you are the brand. You know what I'm saying? Correct. You are the brand. So, like, now you have to trust that you can even put a body in place that's going to train the way you would train. And then, that's the and, and that's what I mean. <laughs> that's like, the problem. You're not even lying. Yeah, you know. Like, I had a, I had that's like, super the difficult. One I got, she's, my, she's my intern, and she interned for me. You know, but... It took what a year. Yeah, like you, you know? can't, and then even the guys like or girls that you would like believe in, they're gonna go do it themselves and live in the margin themselves. So it's the hey, hey so we just we just, just talking hey, about this. Hey, hey, this is why you saying that it kind of gets under my skin because oh, literally, yeah, dude, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm I'm just being honest with you, man. Like that that shit right there has happened to me over the last three years, man. You, you teach everything you know, and then it's like either that people want to come around for clout. Or, or they want to come around because I'm the hot trainer and then they learn all my shit and then they go do their own thing somewhere else. Yeah, and, and look. And, and, and it's and real look. frustrating because it's like, man, I don't have a big name. I'm older. I'm not good with the social media stuff, yeah. man. And, but look, and so, I'm trying to get so better at it. Listen to me. You need to create a system that they don't leave. Right. And you're better off like you're better off taking them taking 80 percent of the, the money and you keeping 20 to keep them in the jail or in the in the gym. So you got people in the gym. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's, that's what I've done. I've always paid out more. It's just the fact they want their own brand. Yeah. Everybody doesn't want to do it as a collective team or they don't want to be part of a team. They yeah. want to. Oh yeah, I know. I, I know. I know. Now I'm going to take it and go over here and start my own thing. Yeah. Look, Instead of saying, OK, let's hey, do something big and a vision. Hey. 
And and yeah, there's and, no doubt. And in the in the game you play, it's it's and you're the leader of it, right? Because at the end of the day, you are you're still the main. The very best cli- clients are coming in to train with you. You know what I mean? And and right. and it's very hard to 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 scale because it's basically how much time do you have is essentially like how much you can make a, unless you can begin to scale it out turn it into classes that you teach a class and now people uh you know t- pay twenty dollars for the class and now you can put 20 people in the class like rather than training one person is is ways right. around that but to to the concept of Giovanna doing it is it's a little bit different because she's now making a sellable product, right? So if she finds the person that's going to partner with manufacturing and selling the books, then now Mm -hmm. she can be, that person's focused on doing the hardest thing is manufacturing, distributing and selling. And she can create that reoccurring revenue with a partnership rather than needing to like go through every single thing by herself. And and the difference in her being, essentially a content creator versus being when you get jammed up when you're a service provider and like is and the amount of hours that you have is all that you can ultimately do you know what i'm saying but but look we do i do group stuff it's just tough man yeah and and look and i do a lot of groups man hey and 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 there's the the reality of being your own boss and entrepreneur is you gotta fight for it until you find the sustainable best way to do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and finding the right people. And there's, there's a lever in there that you got to hunt to get to rather than like go, you can't keep going through the same stuff of like not having the time, then the people quitting, then like not being able to do it. Like you got to solve those problems and get yourself to keep trial and anything that you can until you lock in, including rethinking the positioning of the way you position the gym. You know what I mean? And, and just getting to the place where it provides that sustainability, the same as like on Giovanna's side, like she just wants it to be sustainable, right? And like if it was, if there was someone handling the manufacturing and sales of the book, and then it was just getting the revenue split, even if it was lower, it's like, okay, now this is going, I can focus on just being the brand and creating more stories. Um, it's just how we, you just got to really spend that time to map out, um, all aspects of the business. And then while you're living it, keep reiterating it to get yourself to a place of sustainability. Cause otherwise you will just keep doing the same things over and over again. Now, Giovanna, I would love to hear your life vision. I'm sure that it's, it's, it's a broad and rich one. <laughs> well, I actually have envisioned like Jojo knows learning centers like all over the world. But when you walk in, depending on the tri-level reading phase, that would be like the color of the door. So like newborn of four, that's our um, Teddy square. So that would be purple. So you start to connect with purple. And then on the other side, when uh, we go over to our five to eight year olds, it's green. So you walk in on the green side and then the other side's red, but they all meet in the middle, just kind of how I think things should be anyway. But you can see them from a distance. It's like a kaleidoscope or a destination place. And that's what I see eventually because I want to take the books. um, You know, I want to convert them to American Sign Language and ESL oh, man, it's and just deep. really make it's it. deep. And but and where's your A? Hey, let me ask you this. Where's where do you find happiness and 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 all of this? Like where to you is like the 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 goal of like, man, if I can land here, like that would be my happy place. Like what when you see that, where is that? That would be when all of my friends and family can start to feel the comfortability of what it feels like to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, it would be really nice to connect with them and let them know that there's a lot more out there besides their nine to fives. But the only way to do that is it's like, we have to build it first. Like there's some people who have to kind of step out and do it first so that others are more comfortable. So yeah, success for me will be when we finally circled around and we're able to give back to everyone else and we can start to support what they want to do as well. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Cause that really is the, the showing that it's possible 
in and mm -hmm. being the example of what possible I think is is you know is, is amazing. I cry in my books too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I I know how I'm, much soul and, and and effort and every ounce of you that's that's put in this, and I really, I really I really think it's amazing. And and, and look, I I think. I think you, you, you got to try to find, um, that right partner, you know what I mean? That, that believes in this story, yeah. you know, and, and can like, cause I mm. think you have the right product, the right brand, the right vision. I do think you like tighten up like its core value of like this sort of family wellness being at the core mm -hmm. of it. Families get together, read it. It's, it's about family wellness and mental health and doing it together and together, uh, you get stronger and better. And, and, and I, I just think that there's like so much potential. And I think somebody who has the resources and publishing and understanding mm -hmm. it is like the right partner that could help you, you bring it alive, you know? So, so look, I, I appreciate being able to spend the time with you together. And then are you a 5013C or like, how are you structuring the business? So we've applied for our 501C3. It takes six to eight weeks or so. And so we applied in late uh, 2021. Okay. So we're just awaiting to hear back, but we'd like, it's being structured as a 501C3. And then what's the, on your website, people can donate. Mm -hmm. And what does the, the donation go to just supporting the learning center? S so on the website, it would be jojonoslearningcenter.com. And what the donation will go towards would be to start to build the, the epicenter of the learning center. So installing the VR headsets, getting the right tutors and staff on board so that we can start to create the assessments. Um, it will go towards product. So like, I really want to get the product of these shapes and characters, the Holly Hart, the Cyrus Circle. I think they're so viable and they can really start to go to homes and connect with the readers because they'll come with a book. So I want to be able to put those profits towards packaging up a product. And how much and money are you trying to get um, to do all that? I have asked for about 500000 And where that came from was that would be three years of startup capital for, I have it listed at seven employees four VR headsets, and then I would be able to do the product where I would be able to go to the schools and work with the grief counselors because of our JoJo Knows Pain book. It's something that we've been working on, but the monies would go towards really staff so I could be better branding the brand. All right, well, look, I'm going to go on there and I'm just going to, I'm just going to donate a little bit of money on there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be able to run a whole 500 K for you, but I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw some, a few thousand on there for you. You know what I mean? And, and, Thank you, and Rob. just to, just to kind of get it cooking and look to every single person in the KC area, if you want to get fit, if you're trying to just get in <laughs> shape, there's only one person. It's Luther Glover. Okay. There's only one man that's going to keep you strong. He's going to, he's going to get you stronger than you ever been. He's going to get you that cheetah speed. Okay. If you got to run from an ex-boyfriend, you got to like outrun an ex-girlfriend, what you just got to be fit. Cause you're like a star soccer player. You just want to be a football player like Tyreek Hill. Luther is going to get you there. You know what I'm saying? So you find this man in KC and, and, and you get the workout and you, and, and Luther, do you promise to, to, to make them extra fit in the best shape of their life? Hey, I'm going to get them right, man. Beast body, man. Okay. Summer body. Hey, summer's right, coming. Find my man, Luther. Javon, I appreciate it. It's great to meet you. And I wish you, wish you the absolute best. I, I think you think about like focusing in on that as, as more of like the family wellness and really connect. I think you'll get a lot further with people uh, supporting it when it has a, a tighter focus and always try to try to keep it within as tight as you can. And when you're telling the story and I, and I think you got a great story and look forward to seeing the tri-level reading system all over the world, even in sign language. All right. I wish you guys the best. All right. That's it for our show today. Thank you, everybody who listens to this show. As always, like and subscribe wherever you do that. And, of course, uh, you know, you want to be a part of the show, go to Uh, You know, send us your life vision, your business vision. Let's talk about it. You want to pitch us an idea, pitch us an idea. You want to be a machinist and be a part of our process. Again, everything at DeerDeckMachine.com. And you know what we do down here. We put a vision to everything that we can. We create clear clear plans so we know it's possible and we give it everything we got and everything that we do 
see it, believe it, do it. Until next time.